All right, let's look at the combo box. Uh, it's more complicated, uh, and uh, let's see if I can remember everything in it. Here is a combo box, and I've thrown a few things into it. Let's. Um, the, first of all, we get the combo box, which is the parent, and in the combo box is an entry, and in the entry there is shadow text. Um, the select an item, you see it over here. That's the uh, well placeholder text that's in there, and there's also an icon. Um, I just pr printed, add, picked a dialogue error. You could pick anything you want. How about delete? Uh, that will appear. You don't have to have an icon, um, but uh, if you want, you can also have an emoji in there. Um, emoji is not turned on. I don't see where you turn it on here. There is some place to turn it on. All right, so we've got the combo box. We've got the entry. Uh, what's in the entry? Well, the entry is the result of a list store up here, which I created. Creating the list store created the entry uh, inside the combo box. Now, what's actually there, that's the entry. That's the list box. Excuse me. That, that's the list store, um, which are items uh, that can show up in the entry box. Here is the list store. You can see there are the items. I'm just giving an overview here. We'll try to sort them all out in a moment. But um, so this is the list store. It has three rows. Each of the rows is a character array. Um, there's only one column because uh, that's all we're really using in the combo box, although a list store could have multiple columns. In any event, uh, I only put three down here. You could add additional ones. So there is the list store. The list store is that was actually created um, as the tree model for the combo box. I'm back up at the combo box level here, okay? Um, I'm at combo box. And if you notice up here under general, we have tree model, which is list store. And you see it's it's been created. It's there. So I will say cancel. Not going to change it. Um, and then once I created the list store, I had to put things into the list store. And the list store put the entry box into the, into the combo box. So it all kind of works. Let's look at it working. And then back out of here. Oh, I left this on the screen. You'll notice those error messages. And they look awfully dangerous, don't they? Um, critical. Um, uh, they don't mean anything. Uh, GTK throws error messages uh, constantly. Uh, they just turned out because something was highlighted. It had, so don't get upset. If you actually watch GTK code running, generally you don't see it running because it's it's run on a desktop icon or something, and uh, you don't see the actual, any output from it. But... Um, GTK has a tendency to throw a lot of error messages, and most of them are irrelevant. Um, sometimes they mean something, but for the mo you can actually turn them off. There is a way of turning them off, uh, but don't get worried about them. Anyway, I was going to run the thing. Um, all right, there it is. So that's what it looks like. And the way it's set up is uh, when I click here, I can select an item. And uh, let me so select item, um, selecting item three or test three um, caused it to uh, change the label to entry equals test three. There was also something that got printed on the screen here because there was actually two callbacks that came into effect. I only used one of the callbacks, but I put this uh, combo one bo combo one change entered um, to indicate that, yes, it, uh, it, there was a... Um, um, there were two callbacks that actually occurred. So that's what it looks like. Um, and um, uh, so anyway, now how do we do it? How do you build it? Well, I'm going to tr I'm going to build one up from the start. So we go to combo box. Uh, here's a combo box and I drag it in. I'm going to try and make it look like the other one. All right. And I go over here to common and I get rid of the height request. Um, now the width request... Um, it, it turns out, if for some reason, the width, width request locks up once you put entries into it. I don't know why. It becomes insensitive to this number. So you better get the uh, width uh, correct at the beginning, or you'll have to do it over. That's what I found out. I don't know why. It's probably something they need to fix. Uh, but anyway, so I've got the combo box. Uh, I should give it a name. Um, I'm not, since I'm not really going to use it, I'll just call it triple X. This one over here is combo one. Okay, it's combo one. This one over here, let's just call it XXX. Has, um, well, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself here. So I do, you give it a name, that'll be the name you use inside your program. 
as before. I don't think anything else here needs to be fussed with. Um, okay, tree model. What's going to be inside the combo box? Um, and I click on this. Now, um, I could, uh, if I specify new, well, it uh, created a new list store. Okay, list store two. I really didn't want to create a list store two, but it created a list store two. There is list store two. All right, and um, I suppose it's better we do it from the start. We go to column type. Um, we want to define a new column, and you have a lot to choose from. I don't think every one of these works. All right, uh, they they really seem like they shouldn't. But um, but a character array is probably what you want. Now you can put numbers, integers, and so forth, but character array is, I think, the most common thing. And you need to give it a name. Uh, character array 1, um, uh, gcar array 1 is, is fine. And then you're going to add rows. And um, um, let me call it... Um, I'm not going to be very creative here. Um, uh, let's see. I don't know if it actually... Uh, whoops. Um, I didn't cancel. Um, I didn't hit the right sequence there. Okay, that's as far as I'm going. So I've created three rows with contents. Um, the contents are anything you want. That's the contents you're going to get back when you um, inquire of the row. So, um, yeah, that's... Um, I don't think there's anything else I need here. No. Uh, there are... It, this is actually sensitive to um, to being modified, so you could, the right does, can generate signals. Okay, so um, we go back to um, the combo box, the triple X guy up here. Uh, has entry. It had, does not see these guys, this list store, until you click on has entry. All right, see it changed. Um, and it widened. I don't, I don't know um, what its theory on this is, but um, um, I'll move it back over a little bit. Um, but anyway, the width things um, are a little bit obscure. I don't know what they're really doing. Uh, let's see. Uh, the uh, We need to tell it, um, as, as it was over here, you see it's a zero, entry text column. Uh, in, the, in the list store, there can be multiple columns. There's only one, as it, and the one I've got. Um, it's set to minus one, which is not a valid column, but zero is the first column. Zero is the first column for you know how that works. Uh, so um, that's going to be the first column. Uh, let's see if I go now. You see the entry is in here. An entry magically appeared, um, and placeholder text, um, yeah, something like that. Um, and let's see where are the emoticons? Uh, pray, um, well, there is the, uh, the there's the icon uh, if you want to. Yeah. Put an icon in there. Um, you get the whole list of icons. How about a checkbox? Something like that. All right. So um, there they th there it is. Um, that's uh, that's basically all I need to do to set up a combo box. Now it is possible dynamically to add additional items in your program, but if you've got a static list, this is fine. This is all you need. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's the there's the emo emoticons here. Um, as a happy face. And if you click on it, you can get a lot of uh, additional... Ha um, um, I don't know why they're necessary, but uh, you might want to use them. In any event, I am at the what? I'm at the entry level. Um, at the combo box level, uh, I think I've got everything um, everything selected. So I have not done the signals yet. So in that regard, I'll get rid of the combo box um, and go back to the one that's already there. This is one is already here. The signals are already done. Now we've got um, two sets of signals. Uh, one is for entry. Um, there's entry signals, and there are um, and there is um, there is the combo box changed. Now when I get over here, um, I should have had one of these. Oh, it's under editable. Yeah, they hide these things under editable. Um, so we we get when we're using a combo box. We can get the signal that somebody has selected from two places. One of which from the entry box. That's called an entry box. When it comes from the entry box, the signal will be under the GTK editable, and it'll be changed. The signal was called changed on entry one. Changed. By the way, I, the entry was given a name here. Entry one. 
Okay, I think I missed him. Didn't mention that. Okay, the signal is in, uh, changed, and then it would be on entry one changed, and it's set up in the usual fashion. All right. Um, the other way is at the combo box level under signals on combo one changed. You will get a signal if the content if the content of the combo box has changed. In other words, the entry has changed. So you can get two signals. The problem is here you're only getting the combo box. You're not getting the actual entry. And you need the entry in order to get the text out. Uh, you could, however, go over here and set up some user data and pass to it entry one. Okay, so that would be the sec. So in the entry in the in the in the callback routine known as on combo one changed, you would get two parameters. One would be the pointer to the combo box, and the second would be a pointer to the entry. All right, and that's how you would extract the entry. Um, I'm not going to do that, however. Um, I d it's in the code, but um, I went by the I went the entry route. All right, is that clear? In in the uh, under GTK editable, um, it's uh, on entry one. Um, you know, uh, changed the usual way. You know, I did it before. On entry one changed, which will be the signal we get when something has happened. And now we go over to the code, and um, and how do we do this? Um, well, first of all, we get a GTK widget for combo one, and we get a GTK widget for entry one. Not surprising. And then further down, we've got combo one on the builder side. We got entry one on the builder side. Now I'll go down to the end of the program. First callback routine is on entry one changed. And what I do is I'm getting a pointer to a GTK entry, which I call E. Um, and then I set up a temporary character array. Make sure your character array is you know big enough to hold things. Um, if it's a long entry or something like that. And what I'm doing is I'm going to write into temp entry equals, and then that's where the string will be put. Where's the string coming from? It's coming from that function. The function is gtk underscore entry underscore get underscore text, and you pass to it uh, the pointer to the entry. And what that will do is it will get the text in the entry box. And the text in the entry box came from the list store. Oh, I still have list store two there. I need to delete it because um, I'm not using it anymore. Uh, I'm using list store one. So uh, what it does is we'll fetch the text from the entry box, which is in the combo box, which came from the list store. And uh, it will uh, put it into that string. And then that string is used to set uh, label one. So I, that temp string um, is used to set the contents of label one. It'll say entry equals, and it will be whichever entry I selected. The next one down here, I really don't do anything. This is the alternative. Um, this is the, as a result of combo one changed, you'll get a signal here. I only have one parameter, yeah, but if you want to know who the entry is, you better have two parameters. And the second would, one would be a, um, a pointer to a GTK entry. So it'd be GTK entry star E, because that's what you're getting, a pointer to entry. And then um, that would be the entry in the combo box, which has the changed value in it. And you would fetch it out in the same way as you did up here. That's got two parameters rather than one. So I went with the other one. In any event, you will see that this will print out the phrase combo one changed entered um, in, the, in the terminal box uh, when it runs. The previous uh, um, callback routine up here, this is the one that actually will change the label that you'll see on screen. In the background, you'll see the other one. That's something you can do for debugging, by the way. You can put printf statements anywhere in your code, and they'll print back to the terminal box in which this is all running, and they'll tell you whether you're really entering these things or not entering them and what parameters and values there are. It's uh, That's how you really do debugging, is you put your print statements in, um, in the code, and it will... Um, It'll show up. Okay, we'll get out of here, and we'll compile, see if everything compiles. Um, no, I just did a FFmpeg. That's that's from a previous thing. Sorry. Uh, when I do these videos, I'm doing record my desktop. Record my desktop does a very sloppy job of putting putting together the .ogv files, which uh, YouTube um, it doesn't like the looks of. Uh, what it's doing, it's screwing up the keyframes. 
uh, in the in the video, the keyframes are the reference frames um, from which the compression is done. If you run it through FFmpeg, and that was the FFmpeg command you saw there, it was it was kind of screwed up. I'll do the comp. Whoops. Um, I hit a backslash, and that means a continuation. But the FFmpeg, um, well, you can see it at the. It was from a previous. Uh, I did it before. I somehow got screwed up. But it's FFmpeg I for input, and then there's uh, the previous part five dot OGV. That's input. I set the video size to be HD seven twenty. That's um, sets the resolution that FFmpeg will produce, and then the output is P six dot, or in this case, it's P six dot MP four. Um, and uh, FFmpeg will read the OGV, it'll fix the keyframes, and it will uh, create a, a proper MPV file, MP4 file, excuse me. Okay, um, inside baseball. FFmpeg is your toolkit for video. It does everything. All right, I'm ready to run. And there it is. We've seen this before. Now down here, um, oh, we got a, we got another uh, someplace in here. There's something generating an... Um, a useless error message. Um, um, text equals null. I have no idea what it's doing. Uh, wasn't there before. Um, something I changed. Okay, test one, and you see uh, entry one equals test one. These again, like I said, these so-called critical error messages. I don't know where they. They're not critical. Uh, if I go to test three, and every time you notice down here, combo one is changing. Um, that uh, that it, we're entering into that subroutine as well. I'm not doing anything other than printing out a message, but I'm just pointing out this two, this, you get two signals. The signal that's actually causing uh, this uh, entry to equals test two to occur is uh, one of the signals. The other one just prints something out. So there you are. This um, icon is, of course, meaningless, but you know if you want an icon in there, that's how you do it. And then we have the previous box here, the switches. Um, we've got our... Uh, Thing here. What did the toggle button do? Oh, it just uh, toggles on and off. Uh, this this actually uh, pulls out the value of the spin, if you recall. And there's my radio buttons and the check button. So all this stuff's working, um, um, it, despite the critical error message. I um, there must be something down there it doesn't like. I don't know what I I didn't notice when I uh, when it came in there. Um, Start it up again. See what happens. It's it's something early on. Assertion text not equal to null. Uh, I've seen that a lot. A lot and um, combo box uh, set ID column. Um, I don't know what I don't know what's causing that. It's conceivable. It's the fact that this list store is here and I really which I, I'm not using. Okay, and I don't know. It may have been invalidly put together. So I'll save that. Um, and. Uh, Go back here and see if that made any difference. I don't have to recompile because um, it's oh, only it changed the XML file. Yeah, see that was it. That extra list uh, list store in there was causing the problem, which not was not really a problem anyway. So, isn't this fun? Uh, but anyway, now you've got um, a toolkit of quite a few uh, things. Um, uh, you know, which um, and these are the things that you would build up a typical GUI. Um, and um, we'll do some more shortly.